So we're going to read a story today about a man named Martin Luther King. And yes, it actually says day because he had a whole day named after him. So I'm going to read this story and tell you a little bit about the man that was so important and so inspiring that we actually celebrate a day for him. Shall we begin? Martin Luther King Day by Linda Lowry and illustrated by Hetty Mitchell. It was Monday, January 20th, 1986. Church bells rang out across America. There were parades in Chicago and marches in New York City. 400 people rode a freedom train across the state of Washington. Why was everybody celebrating? Leaders from all over the world met in Atlanta, Georgia. They talked about peace and justice. In Arizona, children let hundreds of balloons fly up to fill the sky with color. People were celebrating from Alaska to Florida, from Hawaii to Washington, D.C. Why? It was the first time Americans had celebrated Martin Luther King's birthday as a national holiday. More than 27 countries across the world celebrated, too. People talked about how Dr. King had made, a wor made the world a better place. Who was Martin Luther King Jr.? How did he make the world better? Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15th, 1929. When he was little, his family called him M.L. He lived with his parents, his sister, and his brother in a big house on Auburn Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. M.L. felt safe and happy in his home. Three blocks away was another place M.L. loved to be. It was the Ebenezer Baptist Church. His father was the minister there, and his mother led the choir. M.L.'s parents had some firm rules for their family. No matter what the children were doing, they always had to be home for supper. Supper time was important. It was, a, it was a time for the whole family to share their ideas and their feelings. It was at the dinner table that ML's father and mother taught him one of the most important lessons of his life. They taught him to treat all people with respect. Not everyone in Atlanta knew how to treat others with respect. As M.L. grew older, he saw that white people and black people were treated differently. M.L. and his white friends could not drink from the same water fountains. They could not even use the same public restrooms. M.L.'s best friend was white. From the time they could walk, the two friends had played together on Auburn Avenue. Then came the first day of school. M.L. was sent to a school for black children. His friend was sent to a school with other white children. After school, M.L. ran to see his friend. When he knocked on the door, his friend's mother said that he was too busy to come out and play. She said he was busy the next day, too, and the next. M.L. and his friend were never allowed to play together again. M.L. finally asked his mother, why he could not play with his friend. ML's mother took him onto her lap. It was because ML was black and his friend was white, she explained. His friend's parents didn't want their son to play with a black child. ML did not understand. He knew that the color of his skin should not make any difference to his, pa to his friend's parents. ML's mother held him tight. You are as good as anyone she told him. It just did not seem fair to M.L. When he grew up, he thought he would try to th change things. M.L. worked very hard in school. 
He always loved learning the big words his father used when he preached. Now was his chance to learn how to use those big words. He hoped that someday he could use powerful words to tell people about respecting others. And Martin studied so hard that he started college when he was only 15. Martin never stopped thinking about how he could make the world a better place. He thought about being a doctor and helping people when they were sick. He thought about being a lawyer so that he could help people who were in trouble with the law. Finally, Martin made up his mind and he decided to become a preacher like his father and grandfather. He went to school for ministers. It was there that Martin learned about Mohandas Gandhi, a man who showed the people of India peaceful ways to change the unjust laws of their government. Gandhi did not use violence. Martin read everything he could find about Gandhi. He began to think about ways he could use his own preaching to teach others some of Gandhi's ideas. Martin went to yet another school, this time in Boston. By studying even more about being a minister, he earned the title of doctor. Now he was called Dr. King. While he was living in Boston, he met a woman named Coretta Scott. They were married on June 18, 1953. Less than a year later, people from a church in Montgomery, Alabama, asked Dr. King to be their minister. In Montgomery, people had been angry for many years about unjust laws and unequal treatment. Dr. King hoped he could help solve these problems by preaching about respect and justice. He and Mrs. King decided to move to Montgomery. And soon after they arrived, Dr. King became more involved in the problems than he had ever imagined he would. In Montgomery, black people had to sit at the back of the bus. When white people got on a full bus, black people had to give them their seats. It was the law. On December 1st, 1955, a woman named Rosa Park got on a bus after a hard day at work and she she was very tired and she was happy to sit down. The bus driver told Mrs. Parks to give her seat to a white man. Mrs. Parks said no. She had paid her money to ride the bus. She wanted to be treated the same as the white man. The driver called the police and they came and arrested Mrs. Parks. Many people in Montgomery felt that Mrs. Parks had not been treated right. They wanted to change the unjust law. They asked Dr. King to help them. And Dr. King and the other black leaders worked out a plan. They asked black people to stay off the buses so that the bus company would lose money. And black people walked or took taxis or rode together in cars to get to work. Black people would not ride the bus until the unjust law was changed. It took a year and a lot of work for many people, but finally, Dr. King's plan was successful. The law was changed and black people could sit in any seat on the bus. They were, there were other laws in some Southern states that kept white people and black people separate. Dr. King wanted to change those laws too. He wanted to change the laws without violence. He believed that Americans could make important changes peacefully. He went to many cities to talk to crowds of people. He said that all people have the right to equal treatment under the law. Those rights are called civil rights. Many people believed in civil rights. They were willing to work hard to make sure that everyone had those rights. Dr. King gave speeches to crowds. He told the people how to use peaceful ways to change laws that were not just. One hot August day in 1963, people marched in Washington, D.C. There were people of all colors. There were old and young, rich and poor. It was the biggest civil rights march ever held. Dr. King stood before the crowd. I have a dream today, he said. 
I have a dream that one day little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls and walk together as sisters and brothers. Many Americans also had this dream. They wanted to help make it come true. There were some people, though, who did not agree with Dr. King's words. They tried to stop him from doing his work by putting him in jail. Then he could not talk to crowds. One winter, someone threw a bomb at the King's house. Mrs. King ran out with their baby girl. The explosion just missed them. At times like this, Dr. King became sad and discouraged. He worried about the family he loved. Sometimes it seemed as if nobody was listening to his words. He wondered if he should just stop. Again and again, he decided to keep on working for his dream of equality and justice. In December 1964, he was given the Nobel Peace Prize. It meant that his peaceful work had been noticed by the world. Part of the prize was $54,000. He gave the money to groups of people who were working for civil rights. Martin Luther King continued to work to solve the problems of black people. Dr. King also worked to help poor people gain their rights. He tried to help all Americans who were being treated unjustly. In April 1968, he went to Tennessee to help a group of garbage workers. While standing on the balcony outside his motel room, Dr. King was assassinated. People all over the world were shocked, angry, and sad. Though, though Dr. King is now gone, he left us with his dream. Dr. King's work was so important that many people wanted to honor him. They wanted to celebrate his birthday as a national holiday. The United States as a nation has honored only one other person in this way, George Washington. Fifteen years after Dr. King's death in 1983, Congress voted to create a holiday to honor Martin Luther King Jr. The first celebration would be in 1986. President Ronald Reagan signed the bill and the holiday became official. Dr. King's birthday is January 15th. So on the third Monday of every January, we celebrate Martin Luther King Day. People fly the American flag. Children put on plays about the life of Martin Luther King Jr. Children also make signs and paint pictures that tell what Dr. King's dreams meant to them. People march in parades to show that they believe in Dr. King's peaceful ways of solving problems. Car headlights are turned on at noon. People march at night with candles. The lights help people remember how Dr. King's Work lit up the world. Church bells ring. The sound reminds people that Martin Luther King wanted us to let freedom ring. On Martin Luther King Day, we take time to remember what Dr. King did to make our world a better place. Even more, we try to think of ways that we can live Dr. King's dream each day. He dreamed of love, peace, and justice. He dreamed that we can all work together, no matter what color our skin is. He worked hard for his dream. Now it is our turn. Well, I hope you liked this story, and I hope you learned a lot about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Continue doing wonderful things and always set a good example, one that he would be proud to know that he inspired. And I'll catch you learners next time in the learning zone. Good job. Have a happy Dr. Martin Luther King Day. Bye.